Welcome to Feature Flag Best Practices, a case study of Line Android. I will be talking about Line Android, Feature Flag that we use, and we'll be sharing best practices and case studies on developing features with Feature Flag. My name is Hidetsugu Tamaki. In April 2018, I joined Line as a new graduate and have been developing Line for Android. In the Line Android development team, we use Feature Flag for feature development and management and prefer not to use the more general feature branch approach. In this session, I will be sharing two best practices on developing with Feature Flag. Before I get into the main topic, let me briefly explain how to develop with Feature Flag. With the more general feature branch approach, let's say there is a branch called sticker feature. You would be merging each pull request to that branch. But with feature flag, pull requests would be for different new features and you can merge these to the main branch at any time, even during development. But unfinished features and features that should be released in a later version would be executed on the binary in production. So you would be using a Boolean flag that would enable or disable features to prevent these features from being executed. Then when you're ready to release a feature, you simply need to rewrite this flag to true to enable the feature. In this way, you can use feature flag to enable or disable a feature so that unfinished features would be hidden and those that are ready would be shown. There are many benefits to developing with feature flag, but I will be focusing on instant toggling of features for the best practices and case studies I will be sharing. If you'd like to learn more about developing with Feature Flag, I welcome you to watch these talks that my team has given in the past. Let's get to the first best practice, change logic with Feature Flag. In this example, I will talk about the time when my team had switched the logic without using Feature Flag. Here's what happened. At the time, we were doing a major refactoring. Basically, we were doing a refactoring of the logic that reads and writes photos, videos, and other attachments exchanged over line to the device storage. There were many different logics included, including file path management, resizing content to a sendable size, and generating thumbnail images. The code base was more than nine years old, so these logics were scattered in different logic uh, classes and different util classes and manager classes were intertwined and dependent on each other. To resolve this situation, we built a new class with a unified ideal API to manage message attachments and drafted a plan to replace each reference for every use case. But when we were ready to apply the new logic, instead of changing the file manager class using feature flag, we replace them directly. If a critical bug is found during QA, it could be difficult to roll back with, for instance, revert. In our case, issues were reported, but these conflicted with ongoing refactoring changes and it was difficult for us to revert. Furthermore, because of the refactoring, uh, there are problems such as images does not get sent, the size is wrong, GIF images do not get animated, and many other critical bugs were reported. If we tried to fix each one, this interfered with other regression tests. So in our case, we quickly applied feature flag to toggle the logic. If we had applied feature flag from the beginning, we would have simply needed to switch the flag value to switch back to the original logic. So we learned 
and decided that for fa file management logic refactoring, we will always use feature flag. But with that said, by simply applying the feature flag, if you needed to apply it to dozens of places, you could forget some spots. So that brings me to the second best practice, guard the only entry point. Here I will explain how to apply feature flag for a new feature and for refactoring. Here's a new feature that we implemented. In the home tab, the leftmost tab in line, we implemented a feature that shows different recommended content. In this feature, we use the Android Work Manager library to regularly fetch recommendation data from the server, cached it to the local database, and displayed it. When you run a scheduled execution with Work Manager, you need to initiate the call. So a code that says register new if no jobs are registered needs to be called when the app is initialized. To put it another way, unless you register scheduled execution jobs, data does not get synchronized and the recommendation feature does not work. Here's the code. By guarding the work manager registration point with feature flag, the point which enables or disables the feature, you can prevent the feature from running by turning the flag off. Next is refactoring. We did a major refactoring for the line chat screen. The line chat screen is comprised of different components. We had been using list view, but we recently switched to recycler view. In addition to performance enhancement, Recycler View offers more sophisticated API, so it's a lot of work, but switching brings about a lot of benefits too. From the beginning, we, were, we knew that we were going to use Feature Flag to switch. Initially, there was a direct dependency between the activity to display the chat screen and List View Adapter to display the chat. If we were to build the adapter for Recycler View and replace it, all of the activity calls will need to be switched with Feature Flag and we could miss certain places. So, for refactoring, we decided not to depend on List View API. Instead, we created a class that became the interface containing things like all functions to display the chat list. For the original List View adapter, we refactored so that only the list view API will be called. Since the adapter interface already has shared logic, we were able to create an adapter for Recycler View that only uses the re new Recycler View API. By using feature flag, there is dependency only on one adapter. By doing this, activity does not depend on a specific list implementation, but only on the adapter interface you would be applying feature flag to the place where you switch the class to match the adapter you will be using for your activity. Here's the code. You can switch the class that is generated. For Android, you could switch the layout that you'll be using. So, for a new feature or for refactoring, reducing the number of places to apply feature flag helps you to better keep track of where to apply it. This concludes my session. I hope you enjoyed listening to the Line Android team's best practices and case studies on developing with Feature Flag. Here were the two best practices. First, use Feature Flag to toggle the logic so that you can instantly switch back if an issue occurs. Second, reduce the number of places to apply Feature Flag by finding a feature single entry point. This makes implementing easier and helps you to ensure it's been applied to all of the necessary places. I encourage you to try developing with Feature Flag too. Thank you for watching.